I'm here to tell you guys this right now. If Doug Peterson takes snaps away from Travis Fulgham because Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey might be back, we riot. We riot. Meet me on Broad Street in South Philly. We riot. What is up, guys? DJ Eastwood here. This is the Run It Back podcast, home of the most brutally honest Philly sports takes on YouTube. Some people don't like it, but it's because some people don't like the truth. Hit the like button if you like the truth. Hit the dislike button if you like lying to yourself. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. I give you these podcast episodes every single day. I want my subscription. Let's get into it, man. First of all, we are approaching 5,000 subscribers. We're at 4,627 right now. Uh, last time I tried to do a giveaway was way back at 2,000 subscribers, and I failed miserably because I had a jersey I was going to give away, and it had stains on it once I realized that, and then just, I don't know, it didn't work. I'm going to try again. I think I'm going to try again at 5,000 subscribers. Let me know what you guys think. What jersey should we give away at 5,000 subscribers? Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what jersey we should give away. Uh, yeah, man. Check it out. Before I get into the Eagles uh, talk about the Baltimore Ravens game and all all the stuff we have to talk about, Travis Fulgham and and uh, you know whether or not we can stop Lamar Jackson, just a couple quick 76ers nuggets. Sixer Sergi Olvi leaves the vice president of analytics and strategy. The vice president of analytics and strategy, you're out of here. And that's a great thing because if we had a vice president of analytics and strategy and what happened last season happened, good Lord, get him up out of here. The guy doesn't know anything about analytics or strategy uh, I, don't I don't understand it it's bad but hey listen you guys said we need to change more than just the coach the front office needs a lot of changes and guess what front office changes are happening and we got rid of the guy that was supposed to be in charge of analytics and strategy and if you if this guy was helping Brett Brown come up with those putrid lineups I'm so glad he's fired. I can't even explain it to you guys. You understand what I'm saying? I heard a little bit of a rumor that certain things like Joel Embiid coming out of the game at six minutes every first quarter, no matter if he's hot, no matter what the score is, has a lot to do with upper management more than, say, the coach. And I'm thinking it might have to do with analytics and strategy. So get the guy the hell out of here, man. Uh, just a, a funny a funny uh, piece of article here. He was influential in determining the Sixers' substitution patterns and providing input based on analytics from a role on the floor during games. So you're telling me all those death lineups, all those Furkan Korkmaz, uh, Hal Neto, uh, Norvell Pell lineups in the middle of a third quarter crunch time was this guy? Get him out of here, bro. Oh, my goodness. Never hire that guy again, man. Just don't even hire him. All right. So, uh, I mean, other teams I'm talking to, don't hire this guy. It, and, and nothing that does make sense. Um, Sixers hired Dave Yeager to be Doc Rivers' assistant coach. I said it yesterday that, that there was uh, rumors that, that he might come here. Um, and now we have him, and I'm just I'm, I'm getting so excited for all of the changes we're making. It seems that the Sixers are moving in the direction that they should be moving in. They got an experienced coach who can hold players accountable in Doc Rivers, who has experience, who has a championship, and who likes guard play and likes scoring points and is offensive minded. And now we have an assistant coach who has shown that he can elevate players. He can take bad teams to heights that they shouldn't even be at. And he does a lot of good things offensively, is a scheme guy, is very creative with the offensive sets and plays run, and I'm just very excited for that, man. So, whoo, thank the Lord the Sixers uh, this season is over, and thank the Lord that we're moving in a direction to change some things because it was bad. 
It was very bad. All right, let's get into the Eagles news, man. If Travis Fulgham's lose, if Travis Fulgham loses snaps to Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson, we riot. A quote from Doug Peterson. He said, it's tough. You see what he's done, and it's hard to say, no, he's not going to play. Yeah, you think so. I mean, let's look at it this way. The, the point we were at, where we were all like, dude, we have no wide receivers. Once again, Carson Wentz has no wide receivers to throw to. It's pathetic. It's horrible. Oh, my God. Deshaun Jackson can't play more than three games a season. Alshon Jeffrey is always injured. We don't even know what his injuries are anymore. Last game he missed because he was sick. How did you overcome all of these injuries, and now you're about to play and you're sick? You understand? So these guys are just robbing the organization for money at this point. I'm convinced. And in the midst of all of that, a player comes out of nowhere, off the practice squad, starts snagging balls out of the air like a top 10 draft pick. I mean, it felt like he was sent to us to, as a savior from the football god himself. If there is a single football god, he was like, I give you my only begotten son, Travis Fulgham. Here you go. He's going to die for your sins. That guy, there, there's, there's, a, there's a thing going on here. That guy is meant for this situation. And you better not take a single damn snap away from the guy. Don't do it. Bring Deshaun in if you want to. Bring Alshon in if you want to. Ease them back. But as far as I'm concerned, Travis Fulgham is a starting wide receiver. Don't mess this up, Doug. Don't mess it up. Safety Will Parks is cleared to play on Sunday. Oh, my goodness. Defensive back help. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Safety Will Parks. What does he bring to the field? Well, I, after, I wanted to refresh my memory, so I went back and watched some of his highlights in Denver, and man... People say he's not that good of a cover over the middle of the field, but he is very physical. He's a hitter. He reminded me, just watching the highlights, a little bit of Brian Dawkins. Don't come at me for that. Don't come at me for that. Brian Dawkins is my favorite player of all time. In my opinion, the best safety of all time. But, you know, a great value, Brian Dawkins. A Walmart, Brian Dawkins. I'm all for it. He's a big hitter. And he's physical, and he's aggressive, and that's what this team needs. This team needs a guy that's going to lay his body out there to stop a play. You understand? Denver used him a lot uh, covering tight ends. He has a lot of big hits on tight ends, if you go watch his highlight tape. And Denver used him a lot blitzing, safety blitz from the edges or up the middle on the quarterback. Uh, What does that say for Jim Schwartz's system? I don't know. Jim Schwartz... Boring, conservative zone defense, lack of blitzing. I mean, I don't know if he's going to use Will Parks the way that he was used in Denver. I hope he does because we need action on defense. We need, we need schemes. We need blitz packages. We need creativity. And the thing that we definitely don't need is Nate Gary by himself on the best wide receiver on the field when he already has three touchdowns in crunch time with the game on the line. I would much rather a Will Parks on a player like that, or at least a Will Parks over the top. We'll have to see what happens, man. Um, I don't know, but it's good. It's good that we have Another player coming back, and slowly we're going to get these players back. Slowly this injury bug, we're going to get Dallas Goddard back. We're going to get Jalen Rager back, not this game against the Ravens. But, but what I'm saying is there's so many weapons that we don't have right now, and we're going to get them back. And it's feeling like, oh, my God, it's happening. Oh, my God, it's actually happening. Guys are coming back, you know? It feels like it felt like the whole damn first – couple games of the season it's never going to happen we're going to be out here with no talent all season we're getting guys back uh the eagles are better with jack driscoll than injured lane johnson yes 
They are. It's time to go younger. It's time to start over in some of these positions. Driscoll's 23 years old. He showed great signs of ability last week and the week before that. Lane Johnson comes in, plays a couple snaps, tweaks his ankle again, or it's not fully healthy or whatever, dude. Stop doing this. Stop it. Roll with the young guy. What could be – what can you lose? You're one, three, and one. You're one, three, and one. Give the young guys a shot. Stop it with the Lane Johnson stuff. If, it, if Lane Johnson is 100% healthy, this is a different story maybe. But I'm rolling with Driscoll at this point. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. I read an article that says the Eagles were using Jalen Hurts as a Lamar Jackson decoy in practice to show the, to, to get the defense ready for Sunday and let them know what they can expect. They're using Jalen Hurts in practice as a run-threatening quarterback, which he is. He's not Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson might be the fastest quarterback we've ever seen. Shout out to Michael Vick. Lamar Jackson has the single-season record for rushing yards by a quarterback in a single season. Um, Jalen Hurts playing that role in practice, it's, I guess it's effective. It's a good thing to have. But it, I always come back to, we used a second-round pick on this guy. A second-round pick. Uh, it's how my, it, it's it's what two or three months later now, and I still get pissed off every single time I think about it. Howie Roseman used a second round pick so that we could have a Lamar Jackson decoy in practice. It's embarrassing. It's the it's the it's just one of the stupidest things I've ever heard of. There was. There's wide receivers catching balls right now on a week-to-week basis helping their team win that were taken after Jalen Hurts in the second round. So we're trying to get all these old receivers to come back because we don't have any outside of my boy Travis Fulgham. But at least we have a decoy quarterback in practice. Give me a damn break. Oh. Now I lost my place because I started thinking about that draft, and it just pisses me off, man. Something we need to talk about. Will Zach Ertz snap the hell out of whatever the fucking funk he's in? He's in a funk right now. Last year, through five weeks, Zach Ertz had 34 catches for 379 yards. This year, he has 20 catches for 147 yards. That's a 62% drop-off. Nobody really knows why. That's the thing. You understand what I'm saying? If Dallas Goddard was healthy and Goddard was taking all the catches, like he did in week one where he had 115 receiving yards and a touchdown, if Goddard was taking all the touches, this would be understandable. But Goddard goes down. Deshaun Jackson gone. Alshon Jeffrey hasn't played in two years. Who knows? We thought Zach Ertz would have had more production from this roster situation. And, and this is happening. And it's hard to understand why. Is he giving less effort? Uh, of course, he's getting more double teams because, you know, we got John Hightower and Greg Ward out here. They're not star wide receivers. People can double team Zach Ertz. It looks to me like he's giving less effort uh, because of the contract situation and he's unhappy and he won't admit that, of course, but I hope he can snap out of the funk that he's in because we need weapons. We need people to produce on Sunday. Zachert said, I'm more frustrated that we aren't winning than my stats. I've been in the league eight years. I set a single season catch record. I won a Super Bowl. It was a lot more fun to win the Super Bowl. Now, that's just a, a businessman quote. That's a teammate quote. That's, I don't even think that's honest. That's just what you say. When you're on a team, you say, I care more about winning. I don't care about my stats. Yada, 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 yada. Get your head out of your ass, Zach. We need 100% effort on Sunday. And you got 7,500 fans in the stands. Now would be the perfect time for you to come out of whatever funk you're in. Can the Eagles slow down Lamar Jackson? I only need 
one second to touch on this. No. The answer is no. <laughs> the answer is no, bro. Look, if you look at – I know I'm being negative, but you got to look at the defense fr- in, in segments, right? And the defensive line uh, can get pressure on him, but he's not, he's not Chris Bethard. You know what I'm saying? He's not Joe Burrow even. He is the fastest quarterback of all time. We're going to get pressure on him. He's going to get outside. And when he gets outside that defensive line, who's he going to be looking at? Who's he going to be looking at? (laughs) He's going to be looking at the worst linebacker core in the entire league. He's going to be looking at Nate Gary. If Nate Gary is the spy... (laughs) I can't even say it without laughing. If Nate Gary is the spy on Lamar Jackson, this guy is going to have 781 rushing yards for nine touchdowns. I mean, I don't I don't know what Jim Schwartz is doing in practice to prepare for it, but I don't see good things happening at all if Lamar Jackson gets outside the pocket. And the Baltimore Ravens, have a uh, really good rushing attack because it's not just Lamar Jackson. They have three uh, running backs that can put yards up on the on the board. You know, so now you got a you got a quarterback and three running backs that you got to try to stop. I wanted to be positive about that, but when I think about Lamar Jackson getting outside the pocket and running past Nate Gary, I there's I don't know what to say. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I just don't know what to say. So. On the other turn, on the other end, I'm going to say the same thing I say all the time. Every week, I say the same thing. Doug Peterson has to get Carson Wentz outside the pocket. He's more accurate outside the pocket. It's obvious. It's clear as day. Everybody knows it. Just do it. Get him outside the pocket. Doug Peterson has to find a way to get Miles Sanders more involved in the passing game. I don't want to see 11 carries. I don't want to see 13 carries. And if I do see 13 carries, I want to see five or six catches. I want to see Miles Sanders on the flats. I want to see screens. I want to see Miles Sanders over the middle. I want to see wheel routes. Get it done, Doug. Incorporate this guy in the offense. He might be your most talented weapon on the entire team. Um, and yeah, then, the, you know, the Eagles defensive line is going to have to get pressure and hope to the football gods that Lamar Jackson somehow doesn't get outside the pocket because Nate Gary is not stopping him whatsoever. Now, if Will Parks is a hundred percent and he wants to, you know, they want to have him be the spy. I think we're going to have a little bit more success with Will Parks than one of our putrid linebackers. And don't you dare take away Travis Fulgham's snaps that's all i got for you guys today man my name is dj eastwood this is the run it back podcast home of the most brutally honest philly sports takes on youtube some people don't like it but it's because some people don't like the truth hit the like button if you like the truth hit the dislike button if you like lying to yourself and hit the subscribe button i give you these podcast episodes every single day for free i want my subscription Thank you.